my name is Friederike Range. I'm a researcher at the Messerli Research Institute, University of Veterinary Medicine, Vienna, and also the co-director of the Wolf Science Center in Ansbrunn. And I will talk about a study that we conducted here at the Wolf Science Center together with some colleagues of mine. The person who collected most of the data was Francesco Mazzini, then another colleague from the University of Zurich, Simon Townsend, had this analysis and the writing up of the paper, and Shofi Deirani is a very close colleague who co-founded the Wolf Science Center. The study is really interesting in the framework of the current debate how flexible the vocal production of animals is. We know from several studies that there's an audience effect, so some animal species actually do adjust their calling frequency according to the audience that's around. But only few studies really looked at the underlying emotional state of the animals. Then working with the wolves and taking them out for walks, we realized that they very often howl almost each time when we take out an animal for a walk. And we were interested why they actually howl, so, or how often they howl, if that is dependent, for example, on uh, who's leaving the pack. So it could be that if the highest ranking animal, the alpha male, is leaving the pack, then the rest of the pack is really howling more because their leader is gone. We were interested what drives the howling then, so why do they howl and is, are there differences in the amount of howling depending on who is leaving the pack? What we did is that the wolves went for a walk, so each animal in the pack we could take out for a walk and then measure how much actually the rest of the pack howled. To test if it's really their emotional state or if they have a more flexible control over their howling, uh, we collected the uh, saliva samples and then we can analyze the saliva samples afterwards for the cortisol levels. To define the relationship between the animals, we collected focal animal samples, so we observed the animals, and then based on these observations, we could define the rank hierarchy and the social relationships of these animals. The first result that we found when we analyzed our data is that uh, the wolves are more stressed, so the cortisol levels are higher when the animals are taken out for a walk compared to when they are just in the neighboring enclosures showing us that actually the test situation is more stressful for the remaining animals. So they don't like it as much or they are more agitated if an animal goes out for a walk than if it's in the neighboring enclosures. But when we looked at the test condition, particularly the cortisol level could not explain the amount of howling that we recorded in the animals. But this, the amount of howling was dependent on the rank of the leaving animal, so the higher ranking animals caused more howling, and also on the relationship that the particular individual had with the animal that went out for a walk. So with this study we could really show that also the uh, social communication, at least in wolves, is somewhat flexible, so the animals can control to a certain degree how much they call, uh, yeah, dependent on the relationship that they have with an animal. So this really helps to, to better understand vocal communication in animals and we actually hope that our approach really will trigger some further research to combine these two aspects. So really looking at the physiological state of the animals by collecting information about different hormones, uh, but also on the other hand looking at the behavior of the animals.